This is hilarious here because they're lying to you. They're absolutely lying to you. So listen to this guy at 1813. Okay, so listen to listen to what he said. I find this so hilarious. All right. Yeah, for sure. Um, I'm leaving tomorrow for a uh, quick little vacation. I'll be back on Monday, so I'll probably t uh, touch base with you then, if that's all right. Okay, so the whole precursor to this was I posted an Instagram story about developing an online business. I asked people on that story, do they have a business, do they want to start one? The sales objections I'm getting here, we'll dive into because this guy objected big and he backpedaled so fast. So all in this video, how to overcome objections and how to really close those deals regardless of if you're the realtor and you're getting that backstory that you know is not true, you're trying to get that over the I'm not interested, I don't have the time, I don't have the money, I have to ask the wife. So listen to this guy because this is absolutely hilarious. So I'm gonna have you guys listen into this in this video and you're gonna learn the whole sales objection process. They're just complaints. You should be able to overcome every single one of them and you should be able to close most of the deals that you're not closing right now. So I had made this poll on Instagram stories, which is just like, do you have an online business? Yes or no? People voted yes, people voted no. I took the yeses and then said, all right, how serious are you about scaling your online business? Super serious, not serious, kind of serious, okay? And then I went to how willing are you to invest today? All right, and then people said, really willing, not willing, not at all, or something like that, okay? And then my next story was, how much do you have to invest today? Less than a thousand, one to three, five thousand dollars plus. Okay, this guy right here, let's just say his name is Bob. Bob said he had $5,000 or more. So I went ahead and messaged Bob, got him in the DMs. We started talking a little bit, built a little bit of rapport, figured out the background, figured out his hot buttons, qualified him before spending my time on the call and then said, all right, it's best to get on a call and talk about this, okay? So get on and the whole point behind this is Bob had an e-commerce business before. Bob ran it for three and a half months. It wasn't profitable. Bob has saved up $5,000 to be able to invest and get his e-commerce business going, okay? So as I'm on the call with Bob, what I actually went ahead and did is I showed him a client's e-commerce store. And I said, this is the program that I'm gonna be taking you through, Bob, if you choose that this sounds like it's beneficial to you, okay? I screen shared with him and I showed him liquid proof of how I took a client from zero with no e-commerce knowledge, and Bob has some e-commerce knowledge, to $15,000 inside six weeks time. And my fee normally for working with such clients is $7,500. For Bob, I offered for just $3,000. And before presenting to Bob that price, I verified with him, after seeing this, after reviewing this, Bob, would you like to work with me one-on-one -on -one to implement the exact same process with you? And once again, this is an eight-week program, Bob. I'm showing you results of after six weeks, of just six weeks and we've already made $15,000 net, okay? Bob says, yeah, I'd love that. I said, here's the great news. Remember how I told you that this typically costs $7,500? You were discussed with me the amount of cash that you had available. At first you said you had $5,000. When we got down to it, you said, you know, really at the end of the day for me to be able to spend money on ads and for me to be able to pull, pull all this together, I've got about $3,000. And so I worked with you there, Bob, and I said, all right, I'd be willing to do this, come up with a little bit of a scenario where you don't have to pay all that $7,500. We'll figure something out, put our heads together, and we'll get it at a lesser price. I can get you about 50% off. How's that sound? Bob said, yes. And I said, great. Okay. So what I want to do is we're going to do video calls every single week, homework in between. We're going to set up the same communication you've seen my client. I've already showed you here. We're going to carry that out. How's that sound? Bob Micro commits, says, yep, that's great. Okay, so I said, all right, let's go ahead and lock this in. Do you want to pay with a debit, credit card, or American Express? To which Bob said. All right, yeah, for sure. Um, I'm leaving tomorrow for a uh, quick little vacation. I'll be back on Monday, so I'll probably t uh, touch base with you then, if that's all right. Bob's not leaving, Bob's lying. Bob's lying to you. Your customers are lying to you. These are the type of sales objections that you are going to face. You're gonna get the, I'm not interested. You're gonna present the deal and they're gonna pull out faster than a guy realized he just had sex with a girl and she got pregnant. They're gonna pull out so fast. So Bob here is backpedaling and his wheel just popped off. That's how hard Bob is backpedaling here. It, it's really funny. It's actually, you know, it, it it's somewhat shameful that customers are okay with lying that much. It's because Bob 
Bob feels threatened now. Bob realizes that he's not delivering on what he said that he was accountable for. Bob said yes. Bob said he was all in before the call. All right, you're gonna run into that sometimes with qualifications. So in this instance, Bob got scared and Bob said, oh shit, I need to figure out a way to remove myself from this situation. It's uncomfortable. I need to figure out how to remove myself from this situation. So they start lying to you, okay? This is what happens. I'm not interested is a lie. I don't have time is a lie. The price is too much is a lie. I've gotta ask my wife is a lie. I'm not sure if it's right is a lie. I wanna wait is not an objection. It's a complaint. That's not a real objection. These are all lies and your customers are lying to you all of the time. So here's how we need to abstract. So here's how we need to extract this. When Bob says to me, Hey, I'm actually going on a little vacation. That sounds great. I'm actually going on a little vacation here. Uh, leaving now going to be back on Monday. He's not going on vacation or else he wouldn't have taken the call. You can't, you cannot call people out on this. Here's the thing. If you want to overcome sales objections, what you need to do is you need to listen. You need to verbally acknowledge and agree. And then you need to isolate and overcome. Once again, you want to write this down. You want to listen. You want to verbally acknowledge and agree. And you want to isolate and overcome. Subscribe to the channel before we get any further. Make sure you're subscribed to the channel. If you're currently operating at a five figure or six figure per year level and you're trying to get those skills, you're trying to implement those branding strategies, those sales strategies to get to that seven or eight figure level. We've done it here in my company. We've repeated it multiple times. We've helped other business owners just like yourself be able to do it. So I highly recommend you subscribe to the channel so you can learn sales, branding, social media growth, and really how to build a powerful online brand or take your brick and mortar online. So make sure you subscribe and tap that little notification bell so you stay updated on the daily videos that I'm dropping every single day here on YouTube. So when Bob said this, I realized, hey, he's backpedaling fast. And that type of objection told me that he's actually not very serious, okay? And he continued to backpedal, talk about he'll just, you know, spend the money himself, he'll find a way, he'll probably do this. And so what I asked Bob, here's how you need to combat this. And you combat it by giving support, okay? So when Bob said, let's, let's listen to it again. This is what he said. All right. Yeah, for sure. Um, I'm leaving tomorrow for a uh, quick little vacation. I'll be back on Monday, so I'll probably t uh, touch base with you then, if that's all right. All righty. Yeah, sure. I'm leaving for a quick little vacation. I'll be back on Monday, so I'll probably touch base with you then. There's no commitment. Bob has zero commitment. There's There's no commitment at all. Bob is scared. Bob's being a coward. Bob's backing out. You cannot call Bob out. So the way that I handled this is I said, hey, completely get it, understand. And Bob, I really appreciate your time on this call. I have one question for you if I may ask Bob. And Bob said, yes, I'm calming back down. I'm taking control of the situation. To understand you're going on a vacation, time's valuable. Now I could have asked him where, if I wanted to fuck with him a little bit, where, where are you going? He would have stuttered, Nigeria. <laughs> really? Wow, Nigeria, do you have family over there? I, I, I could have totally fucked with them, right? But what I said is, Bob, so you're going on vacation. I completely get it and I understand. It sounds like you're wanting to wait until you have time when you come back from vacation. Am I correct in saying that? I'm walking Bob right in the trap that he laid on himself that he tried to spring on me. So to say, hey, Bob, I understand. It sounds like you're trying to wait until you have time when you get back from the vacation. Am I right in saying that? And Bob said, yes. So I said, okay, you know what? I have a solution for that. I think it's going to work out perfect. Can I tell you about it? Bob says, yes. So I said, okay, as you know, this program is in high demand and Bob, you're not the only person. I believe that you see the value in it because it sounds to me like based on what you said earlier in the call, you spent three and a half months trying to get this going, going the alone route and you tried to get it going, working on the strategies and knowledge that you had yourself and you weren't able to get it profitable, right? No, I wasn't able to get it profitable. And I could tell he wasn't proud of admitting that, but it was true. And I said, so it sounds like what's worked in the past or what you've tried to implement in the past, going it alone, doing it yourself, it didn't work. Now there's no guesswork here. I showed you proof. You saw the whole system. I walked you through entirely through it. There's no guesswork. This is guaranteed. You don't have to think that you're going to fail. You won't fail. It works. It's 100% works. There's no denying that it works. So here's what I think will be the best solution. You want to wait till you get back from vacation. 
all right? Because then you'll have time. So what we're gonna do, Bob, is we're gonna lock in now. You can pay with a debit or a credit card. And then when you get back from vacation, Monday or after, any day or time in the week, I'll be available for you, Bob, and we'll go ahead and start the program then. And of course, Bob backpedaled. And by Bob backpedaling more, it supported, it further supported that Bob was lying in that sales objection that he gave to me. Bob is not going on vacation. Bob simply is afraid to invest and might not actually have the money. And so we continued to progress the call and I said, Bob, I'm a little bit confused here. Maybe you could help me out. I feel like I'm missing something. And this is where he, he tried to, okay, well, you know, I'll just talk to you later. I'll just talk to you next week. I'll just, okay, thanks, Ben. Yeah, I'm just gonna talk to you. Bob, you know, gosh, and I don't, I don't go, wait, 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 wait. You're gonna lose the deal there. You're gonna lose the call. You gotta maintain control. Don't get mad, don't object, don't lash out, don't retaliate. Listen, acknowledge, isolate and overcome. Listen, acknowledge, isolate and overcome. So I said, Bob, I, I, I feel like I'm missing something here. So I, I'm a little confused, Bob, and I really wanna help you out here, but I'm confused. You approached me and said, hey, I had an e-commerce business, it failed. And you told me that what you had done and the knowledge that you have didn't work. So what do you think is gonna be different about this time? And he's like, I'll just, I'll just, I'll, I'll, I'll optimize my theme. I'll change a couple of things and I, I'll, 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 I'll do this. And I believe he said to me something like, hold on, we'll play it. I, I love this. Listen, listen to this part too. All right, I'm gonna just wait until Monday. If there is a spot open, great. Not, that's too bad, but uh, yep, I'll just talk to you then. Let me ask you what's different about Monday than compared to right now. Compared to right now, I just gotta leave right now to uh, go to work actually, so. He also told me he didn't even have a job. Like earlier in the call, he told me he didn't actually have a job. <laughs> so, but he's gotta go to work at a job that he doesn't have. So just realize that it's all bullshit. I'm gonna play a little bit later on here because I want you to, I can't believe, <laughs> listen to this. Now until Monday, I have more time Monday, new week. So right now I'm just kind of getting ready for everything. Kind of busy, but yep. Right now I'm just kind of getting ready for everything. Getting ready for what, all right? And Monday, exactly. So when I said, hey, no problem, we can lock in now. We won't start until Monday. As a matter of fact, if you want to start Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, that's fine. And by doing that, I isolated the fact that it wasn't about Monday. It was the fact that even if Bob had the money to invest, he didn't want to. And I don't think that he actually did. So I isolated that objection because I said, look, we can lock in now. In other words, pay now and wait till Monday since you're saying that it's the time because Bob didn't want to admit that it was about the money. Busy, but yep. I can literally, I can literally give you Tried a Tried to hang up again. Tried to hang up again, okay? And so now I'm gonna get into it and I'll just, I'm just gonna get into this and show you, okay? So the three rules to overcoming objections. When you have sales objections, number one is you wanna to listen to the prospect's objection. Number two, you wanna acknowledge, I get it, I understand, I completely agree, and that's actually the reason for this call, okay? And number three, you wanna be able to isolate and overcome. So when they say, hey, I gotta to talk to my wife, I'm not sure if she'll go for the deal. Hey, I understand, I get it, I completely agree, I would have to talk to my wife as well. Let me ask you something. Other than having to talk to your wife and making sure she's on board with the deal, is there anything else that would prevent us from doing business right now today? Isolate it, make sure there's not something else, okay? Ways of agreeing, ways of acknowledging are, hey, I agree, I hear you, I hear you, I completely get it, I understand, you know what, I was thinking the exact same thing, hey, it's funny that you're thinking that because I was thinking that before you even said that, hey, no problem, I get it, I completely agree. As a matter of fact, I had a client that called in earlier and they were thinking the exact same thing, so get it, common thing to think about, I completely get it, so here's what we're gonna do, move on. Listen, acknowledge, isolate. Now. Other things, and I took notes here so I'd be, I'd be able to remember and just give you the full deal here. So when people say that they're not interested, okay, this is gonna happen in person with sales objections, this is gonna happen when you're on a call. And by the way, if you feel you're getting value from this video so far, make sure you smash that like button. And also in a little bit here, I'm gonna be telling you about a giveaway that you can participate in. There's gonna be multiple winners. You're gonna find out in just a little bit here if you stick around, so make sure you do stick around. When people tell you that they're not interested, regardless of if it's in person or on the phone, usually, and you have to realize, you, you need to remove yourself from the situation as a salesman sometimes and, and, and look back at it. Look back from a third party perspective. 
Oh, I'm not. I'm, I'm, we're just looking. But the guy that said we're just looking is at the car dealership on a Saturday with his whole family. Bullshit, you're just looking. You're buying a damn car today. You're buying a damn car today. Don't lie to me. You're going to get that. People don't go in on their day off to a car dealership to just look. It's bullshit. They're lying to you. Okay? So that. Here's how you overcome that. Hey, no problem. I get it. You know what? If you're just looking, I'll show you the best deal on the lot. Follow me. It's a 1998 Hyundai Accent. It's got 300,000 miles on it. Only 300 dollars. Come on. And they'll look at you like, what the f***? Here's what happened. No, I'm not looking for a 1998 Hyundai Accent with 300,000 miles on it for 300 bucks. I want a truck. You just broke through that barrier, on to the next one. On to the next, come on, throw another objection at me, let's go, okay? So, when they say they're not interested, they're usually saying that to you before they even know what you're calling them about. Before that they've even talked to you. No, we're not interested, we're not interested. Hey, I understand, I completely get it, I might not be interested either if I was talking to me, but the fact that you don't think you're interested wouldn't at least keep you from giving me a shot, would it? They're not gonna say no. They're, holy shit, I didn't expect that response from the, 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 the prospect, <laughs> the consumer is going to go into their book and go, huh, nah, god damn, I don't, I don't have one for that one. We're just looking. We'll go back to that one. <laughs> we're just looking. They're not going to, okay? When they say, uh, we're not, we had a bad experience. Hey, I understand, sounds like you had a bad experience in the past. You wouldn't let a bad experience in the past that has nothing to do with me keep you from at least giving me a shot, would you? Okay, you can do it. You can say something like that. You can say your past experiences wouldn't keep you from at least giving me a shot and give me a couple minutes of your time to explain what I have to offer you, would it? Okay, that's what you do when they say they're not interested, okay? Or when they say, uh, I don't have the time. Hey, I understand, and the fact that you don't think you have the time to see what I have to offer you and how it could change your life or your product or your service, whatever the case may be, whatever it is, okay? Hey, the fact that you say you don't think you have the time or that you probably don't have the time wouldn't at least keep you from giving me a couple minutes of your time to explain what we have to offer you and how it could benefit your life and your business, would it? Okay, and obviously I'm I'm used to saying this type of stuff. I practice it, so that's why it's fast, but you know, slow it down, repeat this video, you can hear what I'm saying, okay? Now, rebuttals for acknowledging objections, okay? It's, I get it, I get it, I hear you, I hear you. Hey, I completely understand, no problem, I completely get it. Hey, I hear you, I'm with you, okay? Sometimes, let's say your prospect brings up this type of sales objection. Uh, they are bringing up a particular problem, okay? They have a question. Well, what about the money? What, what about the financing, okay? The, the, the payment's too much. Hey, I hear you, I completely understand, and it's, it's funny you should ask that because I was just thinking the same thing, okay? When they're like, hey, you know, I, I don't know, that's a lot of money. You know what? I was thinking the exact same thing. It is a lot of money. So here's what we're gonna do, and let me ask you something, okay? Other than the fact that you think it's a lot of money, is there anything else, paying us the right product and the right service, is there anything else that will keep us from doing business today? Listen, knowledge, isolate, overcome, okay? I, I, I absolutely love this, okay? Now, here's another one that you can use. Let's say, for example, that they're talking about price. The price is too high, the price is too much. Here's something that I want you to realize. Only somebody that's actually interested in buying that exact product would ever argue about price. Only somebody actually interested in that exact product would ever argue about price. In other words, a consumer that is serious would argue about that. A consumer that is not serious would never bring up price because they've never even, it's not even crossed their mind because they're really not serious. Kind of like Bob wasn't, okay? So when they say hey, the price is too high, what they're literally telling you is, I want the product. That's what it is, okay? So when they say, hey, the price is too high, you go, hey, I get it, I get it, I understand, and here's what I'd like to know, okay? What do you mean when you say the price is too high, okay? You can say something like, when you say that the price is too high, what do you mean by that? Based on what? When you say the price is too high, what do you mean by that? Based on what? It's about the price? It's about the monthly payment you're making each month? It's about the bottom line? What, what do you mean by that? Okay, well, it's too much, it's too much. Okay, yeah, but what's your real objection? I understand that, but what is your real objection? The price is too high, the price is too high. What do you mean by that? See, when they say the price is too high, as a sales consultant, don't just stop there. That's not a sales objection, okay? And right now, what I wanna know, before we go on any further, before I tell you about the giveaway that many of you guys are gonna be winning, most of you guys will probably be winning here, let me know what's the number one sales objection you face, okay? Is it competitor product? Is it your price? Is it value? Is it not the right product? They're not sure about the program? 
What's your number one sales objection that you get? Let me know in the comments. I reply to every single one of my comments, okay? Realize that when they say the price is too high, that's not an objection in itself, okay? That's like the flower of the plant and you need to get down the root, underneath the soil to the bottom of the root, okay? That's the flower, okay? That's, that's like, that's like, that's the top, that's above the surface. You need to dig deep, get below the surface and extract the root. It's like popping a pimple, okay? You see the pimple, the pimple is not the objection. The pimple is not the problem. It's the thing underneath the pimple that created the pimple, okay? Don't let customers be pimples, all right? Pop the pimple and do business with them. Close the deal on the pimple, all right? I can't believe I just uh, related customers to pimples. Kind of one of the same, sometimes, all right? So you gotta remove that pimple, you gotta exfoliate that pimple, get past the pimple, close the pimple on the deal, so the pimple is no longer a pimple. It's a repeat pimple that gives you repeat business and referrals all the time. That's the thing you want. So when you're when they say, hey, the price is too much, realize that that is not an objection, okay? The real objection is what about the price is too much is making them think the price is too much. Is it the payment? Is it a big number to them? Have they not invested in something that, that high before? It might be based on their belief pattern. It might not be based on anything logical. You might have the best price in the business. Price doesn't sell. It's value that sells. It's training belief patterns, okay? It's the consumer, it's the, it's the experience the customer has. So when you say the price is too much, what do you mean by that? What's your real objection, okay? These are all things that are very important in overcoming sales objections. These are the type of questions I want you to start asking. Now, the other thing that I wanna make sure you guys are doing is conviction. So when you're on the phone and you have a lead and you go to call it and you're like, hey, is this Bob? Yep, this is Bob. Hey, awesome, it's Ben over from Miller Mafia. Hey, how are you doing today, Bob? I hope you're having an awesome day. Hey, what's this about? What's this about? Hey, I'm glad you asked, that's the reason that I called. Hey, I noticed that you're interested in buying one of the vehicles here. It looks like you're looking at the 2016 Honda Civic. Hey, I'd absolutely love to help you with that. I just wanna make sure questions are getting answered. Yeah, I don't have time right now, I don't have time right now. Hey, I understand, Bob, I completely get it. And the fact that you don't have time right now wouldn't keep you from at least giving me a couple minutes of your time to explain how this product, how this car is going to be so beneficial to your life, would it? I, 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 don't, I don't know. You got you got two minutes. Hey, no problem. I'm not even going to take two minutes. As a matter of fact, if I take longer than that, I'll hang up on myself. Does that sound fair, Bob? Uh, okay, okay. Well, I, I'm at work right now. I'm at lunch. Hey, I understand you're at lunch. I just took my lunch break and you wouldn't believe how chaotic it is here at the dealership. What, what do you do for work, Bob? I hope you're not as, having as chaotic of a life as I have right now. Break the barrier. Calm Bob down. Okay? Most sales consultants, they're human. They react to human emotion. People are humans. Humans are humans. Consumers are humans. Your prospects are humans. Just break it down, break the ice. Uh, no, I, I'm, uh, I'm an accountant. Oh, okay, hey, you know what? I actually need to do my taxes this year. Are you taking any clients? I, I know that you're here to get help from me, but are you taking any clients? I'm, I'm serious, you wouldn't believe how crazy bookkeeping gets in the car business sometimes. I, I'm, yeah, I, could, I could do that. Okay, so here's what I'd like to do, Bob. I, I, I'm gonna answer your questions. I know that I know that you're real busy on lunch right now, but I wanna make sure I have your best contact info too because I'd, I'd maybe love to come have a conversation with you and see about my account. So, hey, Honda, all right, Bob. So I see here that you're looking at this. Uh, looks like you had a couple options picked out here. So what, what's your goal here? What are you trying to do? Are you replacing a vehicle? Are you adding a vehicle to the household? What's the game plan here, Bob? Right, like we're into the deal now. I'm gonna book that appointment, okay? Gotta learn to overcome your sales objections. Okay, so here is what we're doing. We're gonna be giving away a Millionaire Mafia executive pen, and we're gonna be giving out the Millionaire Mafia planners as well. Poorly prepared for this video, don't have a planner next to me here. Millionaire Mafia planners, hand shipped to you, no matter what part of the world you are in, okay? So we're gonna be giving out several of them here. For you to be able to qualify for this, all you have to do is share this video and make sure to drop a comment below letting me know about your biggest sales objections that you face. So once again, to be able to qualify to win an executive Millionaire Mafia pen, all you have to do is share this video on your Facebook, text it to a friend, get somebody to listen to it, whatever the case may be, and drop a comment below letting me know what your biggest sales objections are. And here's the thing, if you're thinking, oh, I don't have to do that, I'll just comment sales objections, guess what? I use systems to determine who shares the videos and who of the shares actually comments below. So I got you covered. You're gonna win Millionaire Mafia Limited Edition Executive Pen and one of the Millionaire Mafia planners shipped out directly to your doorstep. So make sure you share, make sure you comment below. Hope you learned about overcoming objections in this video and I'll see you guys next time.